This is the area where our 100 aqua blocks are gonna go. Chris, single-handedly, is gonna build 100 aqua blocks. Single-handedly. <laughs> I think Ed said you want to be at 37 seconds per aqua block. Oh, well, that's what Ed said. Yeah, that's what Ed said. What did Brian say? 34? Brian said just have fun while you're doing it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I like Brian. I like Brian. <laughs> Some people like Brian. Hey everybody, it's Brian, Chris, Jack, Jonathan with Team Aquascape. It is day one on a brand new project. We're out here in Naperville, Illinois, and we are building a project that a customer's been waiting for a year and a half. I met him right when COVID started last year. He was my first consultation of 2020, and everything was looking good, and then COVID said, hey, you know what, maybe we'll wait a year. And so he's been waiting patiently to do this. It's gonna be a very, very cool project. Project. We have a hundred aqua blocks going into a sustainable stream slash pond system. We have roughly a 13, 15 foot pond by about 50 some feet long. And I'll call it more of a stream than I will a pond and here's why. This is the area where our 100 aqua blocks are gonna go. You can see Chris is over here. He's starting to put them together. We're gonna be double stacking them. So we have 50 on the bottom, 50 on the top. That gives us approximately a 12 foot by 13 foot excavated hole. The pond is gonna come right up to it, but at 13 feet wide, by the time I get these massive rocks in here, it's gonna really have more of this stream system that overflows into this 3,000 gallon reservoir. As the stream moves up this way, it'll get narrower and narrower before it gets to a bridge. And there's gonna be a bridge right here where he can still drive his riding lawnmower off and into the shed. And then on this side, it'll open back up a little bit more. Now, it's what we call more of a deep stream. And I don't know if you can tell this from the camera, but there's hardly a grade change at all. There might be a six to eight inch drop from there all the way over to where the rainwater harvesting system is gonna go. We're gonna drop that rainwater harvesting system down probably 10 to 12 inches lower than the pond, causing it to overflow into there as we have the two pumps push up this way we'll get that current that we need but what will be fun is the fish will be able to swim all the way up past the bridge and up into this area avid bird watchers really really into his garden he's got a lot of cool conifers a lot of cool japanese maples even plants waiting patiently to be added to the landscape design so a couple cool alaskan cedars silver lock fir some different japanese maples it's just going to be great so we're hoping we get this thing done 10 to 12 days I think 10 as long as the weather looks like this. <laughs> we'll just see how it goes. Day one's goal, get the reservoir in. We've got our big cat 308 over here. Chris should be able to come in here, dig all this out. All of our dirt's gonna get relocated over to a large berm for our waterfalls that'll feed that stream underneath the bridge and then over to the pond. The other thing we may or may not do, just depends if he wants us to do it or somebody else, but we're gonna do a flagstone patio over on this side, big enough for a little fire pit and four to six chairs. Hey! Whoa! He's not gonna build himself. <laughs> what are these boys doing? Hey guys, what you working on? Putting plants in. <laughs> That's the summed up version? Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> so we had to move a couple plants, but because we're gonna be out here for a couple weeks, 10 days, we wanna get these plants back in the ground. So we had to move about a dozen perennials, some hostas, some stilby, and some ferns and stuff. So if we can get that stuff back in the ground and then water it every day, we should be able to transplant them pretty effortlessly. So thanks for getting that stuff done. And then Chris, single-handedly, is gonna build 100 aqua blocks. Single-handedly. <laughs> I think Ed said you want to be at 37 seconds per aqua block. Oh, well, that's what Ed said. Yeah, that's what Ed said. <laughs> what did Brian, say? 34? Brian said just have fun while you're doing it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I like Brian. I like Brian. <laughs> Some people like Brian.
up everybody, we are back. This is day two. We kind of left yesterday without really wrapping things up because it was just Jack and I and we ran into a little bit of an issue down here. As you can see, Jack's down in the reservoir. This is our 17 by 12 foot hole. We went about four and a half feet deep with it. And the reason we did that is we wanted to compensate for the depth of the aqua blocks, but also we need to pull off an overlap coming from the stream and waterfalls area that's going to enter into the basin somewhere around where the machine's at. So we wanted to make sure that we had at least six inches to be able to pull off that overlap from the streamliner coming over the pond liner. What we also wanted to compensate for is a little bit of bedding sand. And when we did that, as we got down about three, three and a half feet, so the bottom foot and a half, we started to see that groundwater perk. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what is happening here. So you can see we've got a serpentine trench winding in through here. Now we over dug this, like I said, to about four feet of depth because I wanted to compensate for the three feet of aqua blocks, six inches of overlap, plus another six inches to give me room to play with over here on for my edges for the waterfalls all that stuff because there is absolutely zero grade change from the back corner here all the way over on the other side of the machine where the waterfalls is going to start it's perfectly flat we used our trusty transit over there to tell us so so what we did is we encountered groundwater now it hasn't rained in probably about three weeks out here in the chicagoland area in illinois so for us to have this kind of groundwater raises a huge red flag for us so what we're going to do is we are going to put in an under drain system so i've got some corrugated drain tile in a sock we're going to go ahead and lay it in that trench fill that with three quarter trap rock or clean gravel just to help make sure that that the clay does not end up conforming around the sock and clogging the sock disallowing it to take on water and what we'll do is this trench will come over here and then we're going to run this piece of ads pipe straight up and down outside of the liner and this subterranean pipe will be under the liner so this is an under drain system that will discharge into a looks like a 14 inch piece of sauna tube our sump pump will sit down in that that will all be external or outside the liner once we have that done we've got some three-quarter gravel over there we're gonna go ahead and backfill our trench and then I have sand to go ahead and lay over the top of all of this but before we do that I think what I'm going to do is put a piece of fabric down just over the bottom to keep the sand and the clay from mixing together by putting the geotextile down as it will help kind of even everything out in through here and it won't feel so much like a waterbed and we'll keep our boots nice and clean keep the sand nice and clean so Jack's gonna finish cleaning that up I'm working on getting the drain sock tied in around one end which will start over there and then we're gonna go ahead and lay it in and get our drain tile in standing vertically and then go ahead and get our fabric down and then we'll start bringing sand over okay so here's that serpentine drain into the bottom of our ADS pipe which goes up that'll be our stand pipe that's what our sump pump will sit and then there will be a two inch discharge line just below grade and it will follow a dry creek bed back in that corner so I'm gonna go ahead and start leveling off this gravel. The reason I put the fabric down, again, was to keep the gravel and clay from contaminating each other and to keep this drain nice and clean. Once I put the gravel in, after the gravel, we'll go ahead and put fabric down. Then we're going to put our sand and then fabric and then liner, then fabric again. And we're gonna use the heavy duty fabric because of all of the crap that's along the walls in through here. You've got some concrete, we've got rebar. We didn't wanna over excavate and start opening up a can of worms, but we got a lot of that crap out. But I just wanna have that heavy duty fabric so that when we're back, filling we don't run the risk of putting any holes in the liner so this gravel will continue to move and then we'll fabric it okay, so we've got a 35 by 30 foot piece of liner all rolled up between jack and myself we're gonna try and get this thing done what do you think muscles i think we got it i think we do too it might take us a little bit longer but it's okay, gonna get there. done it'll get done so we gotta drop this thing in the hole so we're gonna kind of get it out in the middle and then start unfolding it the reason we went with a 35 by 30 even though footprint of this is basically a 12 by 17 is to compensate for the walls as as well as kind of wrapping over the top of the aqua blocks to conform to the shape of the back side of the rocks as we rock in the top of this reservoir. So you can see we've got a little bit of groundwater underneath there. Our ADS pipe is in, that is where our sump pump will be held. And we already have all of our subterranean drainage or our under drain system completed. We've got the gravel, sand, fabric. Now we're getting ready for the liner and then more fabric. And then our 100, but 50 double stacked large aqua blocks are gonna go in along with our pump vault and three to four extensions on top of that. So we are getting ready to roll. Like I said, it's just Jack and myself, and we're gonna get this thing rocking and rolling today. Get the reservoir done, right? Yeah. Yep. Cool. All right, let's go. Nice job, buddy. Good job. So we got it, we got the reservoir in. Now we have the fabric liner fabric folded back over. 
all 50 of our double stacked large aqua blocks. We actually have 100 large aqua blocks in there, making it that 3,000 plus gallon system. You can see we've got our ABS pipe that will be our uh, sump pump pit for our under drain system. Now we're going to take those super sacks of sand and just run along the edges and backfill on the outside of the liner and compact it and get everything under compression. And then we will start filling this thing with water to avoid any hydrostatic pressure as well. Let's go. Let's go. 